his team, you know. And after he scored that touchdown, he did this. He kneeled down, you know. And he had the words like Philippians 4.13 on his wrist. He, and he was giving God thanks for giving him the strength to score a touchdown. But, you know what it made me think? The promise that we have in our lives is a strength that's is so much more powerful than just something that allows us to score a touchdown in life. The strength that we've been promised is a strength greater than our own. So then when we reach the end of our own strength and life drags us to our knees, we're blindsided by the unexpected. We know that there is still hope to make it through our most difficult times. I learned that lesson as I asked people to send me the stories of their lives. Many of you have heard that CD, the song Strong Enough is on that CD. That CD was inspired by 10,000 stories that I asked people to send to me. Of course, I didn't know 10,000 people were going to write to me. I thought maybe a couple hundred. Over 10,000 came in. About crashed my email. And I was scared because I don't read so good. But I spent two months having my own little world absolutely rocked by 10,000 stories from all over the country and all over the world. Tonight I wanted to share with you a little snippet of the story that inspired this song. A single mother named Tanya is raising three teenage kids on her own. She's working two jobs to try to make it happen. And she's reached the end of her strength. Meanwhile, her t teenage daughter Haley, who doesn't have a personal relationship with Christ, she's just pursuing her own dreams. She's on her way to college to try to get a degree when she suffers a near fatal car accident. Instead of going to college, she had her insurance canceled. She's had 13 surgeries, and one night at the hospital, Tanya wrote to me about the conversation they had. She said, I was sitting next to her during this horrific ordeal. I leaned in close and I said, Haley, I just want you to know that God promises he won't let you go through anything he doesn't think you're strong enough to handle. And Haley looked at me and said, oh yeah, well God must think I'm pretty freaking strong. those times in our lives throughout the course of each one of our stories where we might find ourselves feeling like Haley going, God, are you sure? You got the wrong person for the job here. For me, it was a hospital bed in Nashville. In 2007, I was about to be wheeled in for surgery on my throat. I thought my career was over. I thought I had sung my last song, but I had this nagging feeling inside that, that I was still supposed to go to Bakersfield, California someday, and maybe God would I will never forget the moment my dad stood there with me. He was about to pray, and before he prayed, he held my hand. He said, son, what's Philippians 4.13? I remembered that verse. Why? Because he taught it to me when I was a kid. Reminded me of it every single day. I even remember my high school baseball games, walking up to home plate. I hear this voice shout from the bleachers, son, what's Philippians 4.13? I'd be thinking, oh, now is not a good time, dad. But May 17th, facing the end of my dream come true, it was the perfect time to be reminded that no matter where I am in the story of my life, as long as God is the author, my story is far from over. And tonight, I want to leave you with this thought. I don't know what awaits you in your life when you wake up tomorrow. I don't know what you're going through. But if you're facing something bigger than you, I want you to know it's not bigger than God. And he promises to be strong enough for you. Would you lift your voices? And sing with me if you want to. You lift your hands in an act of surrender. Let's hold on to this hope tonight. Whatever it is, we don't have to be strong enough. Say, I can do.